and it looks like we're all here. Okay, um, great. Um, welcome everyone. Um, uh, I wanna thank all the reporters who joined us uh, today. Uh, I'm Scott Wiener, I have the honor of representing uh, San Francisco and Northern San Mateo County in the California State Senate. Uh, I'm also the author of Senate Bill 221, which we passed into law last year uh, and which goes into effect tomorrow. Uh, and SB 221 is a very important law um, that, that just stands for a very basic proposition. Um, that when we say that we have mental health parity in California, meaning that we truly treat mental health the same as physical health and prioritize it, that we mean it. And it means that health plans have to provide um, timely access to mental health uh, appointments. That you can't give someone a first appointment and then make them wait two or three months for their second and subsequent appointments uh, because that completely undermines um, effective mental health treatment. So SB 221, again, is very important. It was a strong statement by the legislature with almost unanimous bipartisan support. It's not controversial politically here in the legislature. Um, and uh, we uh, need it to be fully implemented and enforced. And again, it goes into effect tomorrow. Um, I am um, joined here today by um, uh, uh, National Health Union of Healthcare Workers, frontline uh, mental health workers at Kaiser, as well as Kaiser members. Uh, and we're here because we're very concerned uh, that the laws um, that, that Kaiser and other health plans, but particularly Kaiser, is not poised to fully implement uh, SB 221 uh, tomorrow. Uh, that is very concerning because this is a matter of life and death. This is not just someone's, you know, could benefit from talking to a therapist. Yes, people, that's important. People can benefit from talking to a therapist. Um, but this is about people with serious um, mental health challenges and addiction challenges, uh, and they need treatment. The same as if someone breaks their arm uh, or has, you know, a, a, another serious physical health problem, they need prompt access to treatment. So do people with behavioral health uh, problems. Uh, and uh, we're very concerned that um, Kaiser and other health plans, but particularly Kaiser, will not be uh, in a position to fully implement uh, the law tomorrow as legally required. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm now going to turn it over um, to uh, Sarah Sorokin, who's a marriage and family therapist um, at Kaiser. Thank you, and nice to be here this morning. I work as a triage therapist where I help people in crisis and those needing linkage to an initial appointment. Many of the calls I receive are from patients who have been waiting weeks or months for their individual therapy appointments. In many cases, their mental health has worsened since their last appointment. And some of them require urgent or higher levels of care because their conditions have deteriorated during the long wait for treatment. Often I am not able to offer these patients a timely appointment within Kaiser and ask managers for immediate accommodations outside of Kaiser. Unfortunately, Kaiser does not allow the patients with the most severe symptoms to be referred outside of Kaiser for treatment subjecting them to individual therapy treatment waits of six to eight weeks or more. Many patients with mild to moderate symptoms referred outside of Kaiser are unable to find a therapist available in Kaiser's overburdened external provider network and call back with worsened symptoms. Patients with mild to moderate symptoms are also placed on long wait lists for brief therapy treatment within Kaiser. SB 221 was authored by State Senator Weiner and sponsored by our union to ensure that Californians would no longer have to endure long waits between mental health therapy sessions that violate clinical standards and too often result in patients getting worse instead of better. SB 221 was signed into law on October 8th, 2021. It goes into effect tomorrow 
no matter what Kaiser officials might say, Kaiser is not ready to comply with this law. And it is even less ready today than it was when the law was signed eight months ago. Since last October, our access problems have grown worse. After a 30 minute initial intake evaluation with a therapist, patients are frequently put on a wait list because there are no appointments for the next three months to begin individual therapy treatment. Now I'll share on the screen some actual redacted reports from Kaiser's appointment scheduling system that were done for patients seen earlier this month. Starting Friday, state law requires all insurers to provide appointments within 10 business days, but these people are being made to wait until August or September. In the top left corner, you'll find the date these appointment searches were made, which usually is done on the date of a patient's initial intake evaluation, June 13th in this case. You can see that for the San Francisco clinic, the first available initial individual therapy appointment for the patient is on July 14th, a one month wait from the date of their intake. Um, in Roseville, and then on the next screen, the wait is over two months. In Sacramento, the wait is two and a half months. In Tracy, the wait is over two and a half months. In Manteca, the wait is three months. In San Mateo, there wasn't even an appointment available to schedule. You can see no appointment available under the search date in the top left corner. In this situation, patients are placed on a wait list for an appointment or are told to call back later, meaning patients will wait more than three months for their first therapy appointment. Kaiser can say that it has a lot of plans to comply with SB 221, but this is the reality for Kaiser patients. The law is going into effect tomorrow and they still can't be seen for months. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, the next uh, two speakers are Josh Garcia, who's a social worker at Kaiser, and Jasmine Hakes, um, a Kaiser member and patient, um, who will be joined via Zoom uh, by her daughter, with her daughter, um, Rihanna. So there, this is Thank you. This is Josh Garcia. I can start. I just wanted to compliment my colleague up north, Sarah, and share that what she reflected was exactly really what we're seeing in Southern California in the San Diego area. And I'm a licensed clinical social worker out of Kaiser in Vista, California, which is in San Diego. And according to Kaiser, my clinic is fully staffed, yet patients currently have to wait about a month and a half in between therapy sessions. Not that long ago, when we weren't fully staffed, the wait time was two months or more in between appointments. Kaiser says that we're fully staffed now, but we're not remotely close to providing clinically appropriate care or meeting the requirements of Senate Bill 221. When Senate Bill 221 was signed into law, I couldn't wait to hear how Kaiser was going to implement it. But the law goes into effect tomorrow, and Kaiser has not shared any specific plans with the clinicians where I work about how it will comply. It troubles me that the only idea I've heard possibly being under consideration is paring down mental health therapy appointments to 30 minutes. And it is standard practice for 45 minute appointments or more in the area of trauma recovery therapy. We want to work with Kaiser leaders to implement Senate Bill 221 because it would have a profound benefit for all of our patients. But the only way to do that is to add more 45 minute or longer sessions in order to accommodate people and have them seen between seven to 10 days, ideally weekly, sometimes more than weekly in some cases. Anything else is really unfortunately an insult to our patients. There has to be a plan for real care here, not just diluting this, the care and the services that we already have. Thank you so much for your time. Hi, my name is Jasmine Hakes. I'm a longtime Kaiser patient, as well as my daughter. Um, back in 2013, my daughter Rihanna was diagnosed in Kaiser, Northern California, uh, with multiple serious uh, mental health challenges. Um, she was able to get in to maybe two appointments um, before that was treated kind of 
not as an emergency anymore. Uh, in 2019, her situation escalated and we started imploring Kaiser for help, uh, taking her in to um, the, their emergency room services in both Southern California and Northern California, as we were living in LA at the time. Um, her record has been marked since that time as her being at serious high risk of overdose um, and a recorded suicide plan. We were told multiple times that they did not have a therapist that she could see regularly and she was given pamphlets for meditation and sent home and um, told to go to the emergency room if it got worse. In 2020, she was, um, she was hospitalized again for um, severe depression and, a, and suicidal ideations. After two weeks, she was discharged and told that we, Kaiser would get back to us for her regular care or any kind of care for therapy and a, a therapist and a psychiatrist. Um, after about three months of us calling every day and leaving them voicemails and emails, um, she, um, she overdosed and ended up on life support in the ICU, which then prompted them to finally try to get her seen. We were told that there was no room in any of their hospitals. And so we fundraised privately to get her care. We tried continually to get Kaiser to, um, to care for her. She overdosed again, went back to Kaiser and repeatedly we have been told that they would get back to us once they have a therapist available. And to this day, she still does not have a therapist. Thank you very much. And thank you for, for you know, being public with such a personal story. Um, I should mention, I forgot to mention at the beginning that SP 221 sets a very specific standard for timely care. It's two weeks for follow-up appointments. Uh, California law has various time standards for like ER treatment, for non-emergency treatment, et cetera. Uh, and um, uh, and SB 221 put in very specific standards for mental health, for behavioral health uh, treatment. Of course, if a provider thinks that you need less frequent care, it's the provider who decides, um, but a plan is not allowed uh, to force the provider to go more than two weeks if the provider thinks that that's not appropriate. Um, so our final speaker is Sal Roselli, the president of the National Union for Healthcare Workers. And I do just want to say that I'm going to have to log off in a few minutes because I have to be on the Senate floor. Um, and so uh, uh, if, if there are questions for me, uh, Katie Stewart on my team can, uh, can connect you if we need to talk. So Sal. Thank you, Senator. Uh I'm the uh, president into the National Union of Healthcare Workers. And first, I just want to express our union's appreciation to you for, um, for SB 221, for authoring it. Our union is a proud sponsor. Uh, and please know that Sarah and Josh are, are two of our clinicians, psychologists, psychiatric nurses um, that for 12 years now have been struggling with uh, Kaiser Health Plan executives and permanente medical, medical group physician leaders over the lack of timely access to return care caused by Kaiser's severe understaffing of its mental health clinics. And you know, it's that struggle that we believe has helped lead to the near unanimous bipartisan passing of SB 221 in our assembly and Senate. This law has the potential to help so many Californians, and that's why it's so disappointing that Kaiser, as the provider for more than a third of all insured Californians, has not taken any concrete steps to comply with it. We're less than 24 hours away from the California law, uh, and in, in, that requires a follow-up uh, within 10 business days. And this, uh, again, biggest HMO in the state is making people wait until September for their next appointment. You know, Kaiser officials say that they're gearing up toward compliance, but as you've heard from our clinicians, wait times are actually getting longer. Kaiser officials say it's hard to comply because there's a national shortage of mental health therapists, but according to California's legislative analyst office, there isn't an overall shortage in California, certainly not in the major hubs like the Bay Area, Sacramento, 
LA and San Diego. Kaiser officials say they're hiring mental health clinicians, but they don't say how many uh, mental health clinicians they're losing because the therapists are fed up making patients wait eight weeks between appointments and not having enough time to perform all the patient care functions. Kaiser officials are, are, are trying, they're saying that they're trying to fill 400 mental health clinician openings, but they're not saying that the reason they have so many openings is because clinicians are leaving Kaiser in record numbers. In the 12 months between last June and the end of May, 668 clinicians have left Kaiser, approximately double the amount of clinicians who left each of the previous two years. Kaiser reported $8.1 billion in profit last year. It has $56 million in cash and investments. If our members were given the tools they need, including adequate staffing, Kaiser could have the best mental health care system in the country. Uh, but again, Kaiser executives have refused to invest in its mental health services and its members are suffering the consequences. Again, you know, we are ready to work with Kaiser to help comply with the law. But right now, the best way to make Kaiser and all health insurers comply is to make sure everyone knows their rights to timely care. I encourage everyone to go to our website, nuhw.org. We've put information about people's rights under SB 221 and information for people to file complaints if they don't get timely care. You know, back to, uh, I see the Senator has gone back to our moderator to uh, take questions. Thank you, Sal, and thank you again, everyone. Um, now what we would like to do is open it up. Uh, we have Sarah and Josh who have a hard out at 9 a.m., so it's about 10 minutes. Um, and if, if media have questions specific to them, we just ask that you use the hand raise function and I will go ahead and call on you in the order. Seeing no questions. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and ask April Domboski to unmute and go ahead and ask your question. Uh, hi, thanks for doing this today. My question is um, for, the, for the clinicians. Josh, you mentioned that there had been an idea floated of shortening appointment times to 30 minutes. Um, I guess I'm wondering if Sarah, if you've heard that plan floated as well and, and when and from whom that idea came from. Yes. Um, oh, uh, yes, I actually have. And they've uh, initiated that practice already in our Vallejo psychiatry office at Kaiser, where um, patients with severe diagnoses um, like um, uh, borderline personality disorder or chronic and complex PTSD um, are being given um, every other week 20 to 25 minute individual therapy appointments, which is inadequate for the need and um, not the standard of care for treating these conditions. Yes, thank you. And I'm happy to jump in on that as well. I want to be really um, respectful and um, cautious in terms of uh, how I describe it being implemented. It has not been implemented in San Diego County to my knowledge right now, but it's literally the only idea that has been discussed in any work groups. As a um, NUHW union steward, I'm privy to meetings with management um, regionally to be able to see what's coming down the, the way as far as our care for patients and discuss ideas as they're being implemented. And this is the only thing that's been discussed. So I'm hoping that I'm wrong about that. I, I could be wrong. Maybe there are plans in the works, but if there were, um, it's likely that I might've heard about it. So unfortunately we haven't heard anything else. And the standard of care for therapy modalities like EMDR therapy and cognitive processing therapy is at least 50 minutes, ideally an hour and a half. And you really need to also perform a thorough assessment at the first meeting with the client. So with what Sarah is describing here, that first intake appointment ideally needs to be at least 50 minutes or an hour in order to make sure that we're assessing people's needs appropriately. So it's just crucial that we have 50 minute uh, sessions or longer. 
In addition, these safety checks um, where people are called within three weeks if they have uh, a, a severe suicidal um, uh, a, a suicidal severity rating is the way I'd put it. A measure called the Columbia uh, Columbia Suicide Severity Rating Scale, which is a standardized measure. If people have a score of three or higher, my understanding is the law is that we're supposed to have an appointment with them within a week, possibly two weeks. But what's happening is they're just getting a quick phone call. And that's really, in my view, dangerous. So I hope we can do better. Thank you, and thank you, April. Um, opening it up to any other questions, please just use the hand raise function and we'll go in the order that you raise. Okay, we have about five minutes left. April, do you have another question? I do. Um... My question is for Jasmine. Um, thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. I'm wondering um, how old was your daughter in 2019? How, how old is she now and how is she doing now? Well, she's with us on the call today and uh, she's 21 now. Um, and um, so her, her, her condition worsened when she was about 18. And that was when we really started trying to get into Kaiser and, um, and just imploring them. And, and much like um, uh, the Kaiser workers here today, we've gotten that, that kind of response of, in spite of the severity of the situation, it was, we'll get back to you when we can. When she was discharged from the hospital for her second attempt of her life um, in the ICU, she was given a short, I think she timed it, it was a six minute call. And, and it was only to say, I'm really busy, my schedule is crazy, but I'll get back, our scheduling office will get back to you eventually. And, and uh, we've kind of had to um, go around and around. And we're, and actually for her condition, they said that the, the multitude of doctors that she's um, seen throughout the years have said that the only kind of treatment that would help her is DBT, uh, dialectic behavioral therapy, which we've been told there are waiting lists to try to get into some program. Um, and frankly, we've, we've, we're at a loss as to even try to get her the therapy she needs that she, Kaiser has told us that she needs. Thank you, Jocelyn, or thank you, uh, Jasmine. Jocelyn, I saw that your hand was up. Did you have a question? Yeah, I, I was just thinking, I, I don't know if this is a sort of pertains here, but I um, have just been wondering about the move to Zoom appointments. Um, and this is just from sort of personal observation that like for kids too, that when there are appointments available, it's often all online. And I'm just curious if that's sort of across the board, um, what's happening at Kaiser? Um, most of our appointments are still um, a video or telephone visits. Um, slowly, uh, Kaiser is opening up therapist schedules for in-person appointments, um, but you're right, most of them still are telehealth. And um, um, it's important to note that that's one of the things Kaiser brings up as what they're doing to address. SB 221 is to provide access to virtual care. And that has had no bearing on appointment wait times. In fact, appointment waits have just lengthened throughout the pandemic. Do you get the sense that like this move toward doing some in person is going to eventually lead to most people being in person or do you think that most people are going to stay virtual at this point. And honestly it's hard for me to tell that because a lot of those sort of decisions aren't shared with line staff, um, unfortunately, um, so I really am not sure. Yeah. Any other questions at all? Um, Marilyn. 
I'll just ask that you unmute yourself, Marilyn. Yes, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I'm wondering how uh, people can press Kaiser to make the needed changes here, both Kaiser members and also concerned members of the uh, community. You know, this is Sal, you know, first of all, uh, we really welcome folks to go to our website, um, nuhw.org, where we can help people um, contact us, right? Contact the Department of Managed Healthcare, which is the agency that oversees HMOs and regulates HMOs. So we think that, first of all, reaching out to folks and making sure they're aware of this right to appropriate, adequate care uh, and then follow up with um, complaints that we can help uh, facilitate. And, and then, frankly, there's a, a new uh, law that, piece of legislation, rather, that SB 858, that Senator Weiner is sponsoring, that significantly increases fines. Uh, you know, fines for violations, you know, have not been uh, increased since the 70s. So, unfortunately, uh, organizations like Kaiser Permanente uh, see the fines as the cost of doing business, as opposed to, um, you know, a, a, a tool to, to force them to provide adequate care. So that's another law that we certainly hope and, and imagine will pass this year and hope that Governor Newsom will sign to, again, increase pressure on uh, providers to, uh, to obey the law and provide adequate access to care. We also have another website called kaiserdontdeny.org, where literally hundreds of uh, Kaiser patients are notifying us and we're helping uh, uh, achieve, you know, progress access and also documenting um, complaints for the Department of Managed Healthcare again to uh, help to force Kaiser and others to provide adequate care. Thank you, Sal. And I just dropped our um, our link in the chat there. If everybody would like to visit the chat and you can grab that link there. And I've just been asked really quickly, we wanna make a clarifying point that under SB 221, the health insurer such as Kaiser is required to provide a follow-up behavioral health appointment within 10 business days. And that is unless the therapist determines it is not medically necessary and would not be detrimental to the patient. So we just wanna go ahead and clarify that. Um, April, it looks like you have another question. I do. Thanks so much. I'm sorry to hog the floor here. Um, I have a question about the Department of Managed Healthcare. Um, two part question. Um, one is, uh, in in what way may the non routine survey that the DMHC is conducting of Kaiser um, address, you know, readiness for SB two two one, and related to that. Are there any enforcement mechanisms? What what kind of authority or power does DMHC have to hold uh, Kaiser to these ten day wait times? You know, I, I just a little bit of background from our experience. Again, the struggle is twelve years, um, and and the majority of those years we experienced um, an absolute, from our perspective inappropriate relationship between DMHC and Kaiser executives. In fact, um, our experience was DMHC very often um, supporting Kaiser as opposed to uh, consumers, right, which is their role. Uh, under Gavin Newsom's administration, that has begun to change. And, and we're hopeful uh, that that progress uh, of holding Kaiser and other HMOs accountable will increase. Um, th this, this recent uh, survey uh, that DMHC is doing is unprecedented and um, our clinicians are meeting with DMHC officials to help them to, to provide the evidence of the lack of uh, access, uh, the lack of following up on current uh, parity laws. And, and finally, you know, uh, I, th I think that SB 858, again, this uh, legislation to do significantly increase fines by tenfold for each incident, we think is very important to uh, force providers like Kaiser to obey the law. Thank you, Sal. And Kathy, we want to go ahead and make sure we get your question in here. 
Hi, thank you for inviting me today and for hosting this. Um, I am curious about um, what therapists and what NUHW thinks Kaiser can do to reduce the wait times. Well, first and foremost, we're, we're wanting to uh, Kaiser executives to work in collaboration with their therapists, right? Our members to figure out how to fix their mental health system. And we have experience with this, you know, in the in the late 90s, early part of this century, our union, leaders of our union led that exact endeavor on the medical side of Kaiser and, and formed a, a formal labor management partnership that worked over the years to give people providing the care a real voice in staffing and how care is provided. And, and from uh, our perspective, it really resulted in changes, positive changes to Kaiser as a medical care provider. We're challenging executives and physician leaders to do the same thing on the mental health care. Work with us to make Kaiser the, the best place to provide and receive mental health care. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. Five minutes over, so we wanna respect everybody's time. We will be following up with each of you um, to see if you have any additional questions and to share our website as well, which was also included in the media release that was sent. Um, Sal, any final remarks? Does anybody have any final remarks? No, again, you know, I encourage uh, folks to go to our website, nuhw.org, so that consumers, Kaiser members and others, right? Well, all consumers uh, in California of healthcare can, uh, can, can see how uh, SB 221 is a, a new guarantee and how to uh, help us uh, enforce this uh, very significant uh, piece of mental health parity legislation. Appreciate everyone's interest. Uh, and we're available right uh, after this, right, for additional questions or interviews if anyone is interested. Right. Seeing no other questions, we will go ahead and wrap this meeting for today. Again, please do follow up with us via email. We will be following up as well, and we will talk to you soon.